let's find the volume, the solid revolution given by rotating the area bounded by y equals x, y equals 2x, and y equals 4 about the y-axis, and then about the vertical line x equal to minus 2. I first sketch my region. So we'll have the line y equals x, the line y equals 2x, and that's going to be cut off at the top by the line y equals 4. So we get a triangle. When I rotate this, I'm going to be able to look at a picture that looks like this. And then note, since we're doing rotations about vertical lines now, instead of horizontal lines, wherever we had an X before, we're going to interchange it with a Y, and our picture is going to be turned on its side. So here, instead of taking vertical disks, we're going to pull out horizontal disks. So I fix a Y, and I pull a disk out. We note these are going to be washers, so I'm going to take a big disk and pull out a little disk inside. Also, we have functions as y is a function of x. Well, here we want to reverse that. We want x as a function of y. So for y equals x, it's no problem. Just reverse the order. And then for y equals 2x, we just divide both sides by 2 to get x as y over 2. Keeping tracks of things, we note that the big disk is going to correspond to x equal to y. Okay, if I take point y there, stick it into the function, then we're going to go out to this big spot here. That's where the function x equals y is. If I take my small disk, we're looking at the function y equals over 2, and that's going to be starting here, going to right there, to the inside. So now I can get a formula for the area of my section at y. It's just going to be pi of f of y squared minus g of y squared. Or if you're thinking about things geometrically, instead of top minus bottom, it's going to be right minus left. To get my volume, we now take the antiderivative of our formula for area. Okay, this is going to go from y going from 0 to 4. That's z y equals 0 all the way up to y equal to 4, then pi f squared minus g squared. Okay, well this is going to collapse to 3 fourths y squared, so I can bring the 3 fourths out in front. And then we're just taking the antiderivative of y squared, so that's going to be 1 third y cubed. Evaluate at 4, evaluate at 0, take the difference, but you notice putting 0 in does nothing. So we're looking at pi over 4 times 4 cubed, or 16 pi. We revolve around the vertical line x equal to minus 2. We have to consider a new picture. Our methodology won't change. It's still going to be areas big disk minus little disk. But now we have to factor in this enlargement of the radii. In our last case, the outer radius was just given as the value f of y. Note, for my new radius, I'm not just traveling to the y-axis. I want to go two further to get to x equal to minus 2. So that means the new radius is going to be 2 plus f of y. That's going to give me radius at y of y plus 2. For the inner radius, it's going to be the same idea. To get to the line x equal to minus 2, we take our old radius, which was the function at y, g of y, and we add 2 to that. So I get g of y plus 2, or new inner radius, y over 2 plus 2. From here, we can just go to our volume formula. The volume is going to be the definite integral from 0 to 4 of the area function dy. Here the area function is just pi big R squared minus little r squared, so I'll get y plus 2 squared minus 
y over 2 plus 2 squared. We start crunching. That gets me down to 3y squared over 4 plus 2y. We can do any derivatives of that now. So that'll be y cubed over 4 plus y squared from 0 to 4. And that's going to give me 16 plus 16, or 32 pi for my answer.